Now we're going to see how we can add a random rotation to each splat. The great thing about this is that we already have implemented the rotation and scaling material functions from the last module. All we need to do is plug it in the right place and we should get the effect with little effort. One thing I should probably do at this stage is save my level. I'll just call this texture splat and save it into the content maps folder. Another thing I want to do is to change the texture we're using for the ground from this cobblestone texture into a simpler one that lets us see the puddles a bit easier. The cobblestones are a bit jumbly and there's a lot going on, so I'll search for the concrete diffuse texture. And then for the normal map, I'll search for the corresponding underscore n normal texture. This makes it look a bit more like a building rooftop or something. The last tweak before moving on will be to change a setting to enable higher quality planar reflections. Currently, we're seeing screen space reflections, which work well most of the time. But if you get close up, you can see that we never reflect anything that isn't already part of the rendered scene. So you get fade off in certain areas. If we go to Edit Project Settings, and navigate to the engine rendering section. Then we can scroll down and in the lighting section, there's an option to enable support for the global clip plane for planar reflections. If we enable that, then we'll get a prompt to restart the engine. This requires a recompile of all the shaders in the engine. So you might have to wait a little while while that finishes. Once that is done, I'll reopen the map I just saved and right away, you won't see any difference. But if I open up the modes panel, and in the filter, search for planar, then we have an object that we can use in our scene to get the renderer to do an additional render in the mirror direction of the camera to the plane that we're placing into the scene. There might be some flickering if you place the plane directly onto a flat floor, like we have here but if you move it just slightly down below, then the clipping goes away. And now, if you look into the puddles, you can see that the static meshes all reflect correctly. This is totally optional for your project though, and up to you if you want to enable it. And now it's actually more obvious that all these splats have the same orientation and are the same size. That's what we want to rectify. So let's go back to our material and the changes we want to make are going to be in our splat offset material function. And all the modifications we want to make will be done after the offsetting. The order here does matter, so make sure it's done in the order of translation, rotation, and then scale. So let's go to the content browser and go to our materials folder and look for the rotate 2D material function. Let's drag it into this splat offset function. And we don't actually need to look at the preview here. So we'll just make a window smaller for now. The way we want to connect this up is that we want the UVs to go into the endpoints of the Rotate 2D. And for the angle, we want that to be driven by a random value determined by the current cell integer coordinates. I'll just reuse one of the existing random values we have. That does mean that there will be a correlation between the amount of offset in the V direction with the rotation amount. I found that it isn't that visually obvious. And we could do another random node but we need to be aware that it all adds up to the instruction count in the shader, so it could affect performance. But it's up to you if you want to go that far. Then for the pivot, we want that to be a 2D vector with a value of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, to mean that we are rotating around the center of the UVs. I'll hook that up to the output of the material function and go to the viewport to see how that's affecting our material. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that each splat is oriented differently so that they are pointing in a different direction. Now for the scaling, it's a very similar change. We'll go to our content browser and find the scale UV material function and bring it into our splat offset function. Our UVs go into our UV slot and for the random scale, we can use the other random value we already have for the U offset and plug it into the scale slot. Now we need to choose what min and max scale we want to apply to the splats. 
which for this case I'll choose a minimum of 0.5 and a maximum of 1, so that the splats will randomly be scaled down to between half and full size. Now let's save that and have a look at the result. Now we can see that each splat has a different scale. Everything is looking much more varied. The last thing that we could do now is vary the actual splat itself. Next we'll be looking at how we can take a texture atlas of different splashes and apply a different texture to each splat.